him uh, that all the countries in ASEAN face the so, uh, same problem. Uh, in Singapore, for example, we have a very small regulatory team looking at thousands of applications that are coming through. So we do not just uh, we don't have enough people to kind of uh, look at the, all the applications that are coming through, and this is uh, to a certain extent creating a little bit of a resource issue. And what we want to do uh, from the association standpoint is look at how we can build capability, not just for the industry, but for the regulators as well. Okay, the next part of the uh, presentation, I have only like you know, three, three to four more slides. Uh, I just want to share you know, some of the work that we are doing uh, in the region uh, to support uh, the medtech uh, companies. So uh, there's this term called regulatory reliance. So what reliance means is that reliance allows the regulatory authority to use the assessment uh, made by other regulatory authorities while remaining respons uh, responsible for the final outcome. So I talked about uh, you know, uh, resource issues, right? Uh, not enough people looking at the number of applications that are coming in. Uh, one of the things that we did uh, last year was uh, between Singapore Health Sciences Authority, the regulator, and Thailand uh, FDA is that we, we pilot the regulatory reliance project where Thailand uh, FDA used Singapore's HSA as the reference site yeah, uh, in assessing the applications that are coming in through, through Thailand. So what this means for uh, the industry is that instead, instead of taking years or maybe 12 months to have your product approved uh, in Thailand, maybe you now need only two months uh, to get your approval uh, in, in Thailand. So it was a very successful pilot. We ran two pilots, uh, 12 companies in each pilot. Uh, you know, it was a very uh, well executed product, uh, you know, pilot. And what we are doing right now is to look at extending these pilots to other markets uh, across the region. So Malaysia is, uh, uh, course, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, uh, markets that we are looking at. Uh, outside of uh, Southeast Asia, ASEAN, we're also looking at, you know, uh, yeah, looking at uh, Australia. Yeah, so this is this is a very important uh, pilot because we also want to make sure not only for the industry to get their registration approved uh, at a quicker rate. Uh, this also enables um, you know innovative uh, products to gain access into uh, the ASEAN market. Okay, another example of uh, the work that we do is on software as a medical device. Uh, we've seen how uh, medical uh, device is also uh, moving very much into the, uh, the software uh, era with the uh, IOMT, you know, wearable technologies. And, and because this is a, a, new, uh, you know, a new category, right? Uh, the, the regulators would not be, uh, you know, they, they cannot use the traditional way of assessing the traditional medical device on a uh, software as a med medical device. Uh, so again, using Singapore as an example, uh, what we did is that um, we, we, we look at the, uh, the guidelines that the HSA, the Singapore Health Sciences Authority, has produced for software as a medical device. Uh, what we do is that then we consult the industry and say, okay, this is the guidelines, you know, uh, are there areas that where we, where, where we need to adopt uh, to ensure that, you know, the, the guidelines is relevant for the industry. Uh, so HSA, you know, uh, took some of our guidelines and now we have a proper guidelines, you know, uh, in a Singapore context for software as a medical device. Okay, uh, another example, uh, uh, this is for uh, Vietnam and, and this is, uh, very, and this is very recent. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I just want to see the slide. Yeah, so th this is very recent. So um, Vietnam uh, introduced the decree uh, ninety eight uh, on first uh, to be implemented in first of Jan twenty twenty two. But what happened is that uh, okay, this this is aimed at replacing uh, the uh, Vietnam uh, import license. Uh, but unfortunately, um, 
uh, the first of uh, the gen this year, they have not effectively implemented Decree uh, 98. Yeah, mean, this means that if you are exporting into Vietnam, you will not be able to get your products uh, into the market. Yeah. So again, what we did is that uh, we consult the uh, our industry members, uh, we consult the, uh, the the policy makers in country, and uh, as of uh, a few weeks ago, uh, they've actually extended uh, the uh, Vietnam import license so that there will be no disruption in getting you know products into the market. Yeah, and this is so important for uh, the patient because at the end of the day, uh, any of the work that we are uh, we are doing uh, in the region, we, we are looking at saving life. We are looking at bringing innovative uh, solutions to to patients. Okay, this is my last slide. Uh, I hope I save some time. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see from here, there are various challenges across the region. Uh, they could be regulatory challenges. Uh, they could be supply chain challenges, uh, re reinvestment issues, market access issues, yeah. And trust me, uh, new challenges uh, will surface. And which is why uh, the association plays an, a very important role. Uh, for us, uh, uh, I'm based in Singapore. Uh, we have offices in uh, uh, India and China. For markets like Korea, where we do not have a physical presence, we partner with KMDIA, so we work very closely with KMDIA on issues that are uh, in Korea, whether it's regulatory reinvestment, because together as well, uh, again, we, we can't do things, uh, we don't have a presence here and we can't do things alone. So uh, collaboration is very important and I'm glad uh, that we have a very uh, collaborative and very supportive you know, trade association here in Korea, uh, whom we are working with uh, to try to push uh, products uh, into the market and make sure that you know, uh, patients have uh, access to the market. So there will be uh, new challenges, uh, uh, and which is why I'd like to invite you, if you are interested in the Asia-Pacific region, to consider joining us to shape the, uh, the landscape of healthcare in the region. Thank you. All right, thank you. Great. And please give him a big round of applause. And then we will take some time for a Q&A with him. So is there anyone who get a chance to talk to him or ask him the question? about this presentation. All right, I'm going to give you a count of three. Three, two, one. Yes, last chance. All right then. OK, I don't think there's any additional question because you made a perfect presentation. Thank you. All right, please give him a big hand once again. It was uh, so much valuable opportunity to understand that Singapore is a hotbed of a Meditech sector, in particular, the growth rate of the Meditech market in the Singapore was so impressive. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you have been waiting for some long time. Finally, we've got the last speaker of today's conference, and Mr. Davi Wemadu Da Silva, the content of and compliance manager of Brazilian health product importers and distributor association will give us his last presentation on the stage. He will give us the topic for Brazil Meditech industry and Korea company export strategy. Please welcome him with a huge hand. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Coltra, uh, for such an invitation. It was a pleasure to be, to be here. It's my first time here in South Korea and uh, I love it. It's a great country, it's a great place to be. Then I'm uh, David Wemoto. I'm Compliance and Content Manager of Bright. It's an association of medical devices in Brazil which gather around 300 members national, multinational ones, distributor, manufacturers, and importers. Okay, it's the, a kind of illustration of our healthcare system. Our healthcare system is universal, is public. I think it's the most, uh, the most big uh, healthcare system in the world because we have uh, around 200 
million people to be covered in this system. We have a supplementary private health. Uh, I think uh, we have one fourth people covered by the private system. It's insurance one and three fourth of our population is uh, covered by the public system. And we have a lot of uh, authorities. We have, uh, I think we, we are a highly regulated country. We have uh, a national surveillance regulatory authority. It's called, it's well known as Anvisa. And we have a lot of councils uh, which regulates our healthcare professionals, our physicians, our hospitals. We have uh, the ENS, uh, which is our health uh, healthcare. Uh, surveillance of uh, our private insurance and we have a lot of hospitals more than 6,000 hospitals in Brazil have a lot of laboratories and so on talking about numbers as I said a variety has 300 members uh, those members are have uh, 9 billion in revenue of course, the market is bigger than that. Uh, the market of medical device, implantable medical device, is around three, uh, three billion dollars. We have great equipment. It is bigger than that. I think it's around ten billion dollars market. In terms of uh, therapeutic areas, segmentation of our members associated. Uh, they are more focused on orthopedics and cardiovascular uh, uh, devices. Then, if you would like to export to Brazil, I think it's the most theoretical areas consumed in Brazil. Talking about economic data, uh, the consumption of healthcare products in Brazil is increasing. Do we, as I, we can see in this chart, prior, prior to the pandemic, you have a, a very huge consum consumption of healthcare products, but due to, unfortunately, to the COVID-19, those consumption has dropped down. Uh, due to the energy was focused on uh, the, struggle, the struggle with this uh, COVID-19. But fortunately, in 2022, the elect elective surgery uh, was increasing and the consumption of uh, medical devices too. I have made this chart. It's a kind of uh, illustration of the most products consumed by our healthcare system. It's in percentage. Uh, as we can see, the cardiovascular devices are the most consumed. Stent, esocorporeal circulation sac, pacemakers. It's more focused on uh, cardiovascular disease. That's great to, to analyze the size of our market. This chart is a kind of apparent consumption of medical devices in Brazil. Apparent consumption is export uh, is import plus uh, import minus export. Uh, our market of medical device, implantable medical devices, is around three billion dollars here. Uh, and it's increasing. Okay, uh, I've made a search of our uh, foreign trade, uh, foreign trade in Brazil. I've made this table uh, which illustrated countries from which Brazil imported. United States is the biggest one. I. I took the, 
the data from uh, South Korea. Let me, oh my gosh, okay. From South Korea, South Korea is the 12th country which from we import in Brazil. I think we can uh, make some efforts to increase this exportation to Brazil. My goal is to foster this is to foster this interaction with South Korean companies. I think we can move forward in this objective. Okay, uh, we can't see, but I, I've made a list of uh, some products which South Korea most export to Brazil. We can see uh, surgical sutures, uh, catheters, fact articles, orthopedic articles. Uh, I think we can uh, move forward into fostering the exportation of great equipment, image equipment to Brazil. It's a very huge market there. Now I uh, will narrow down in my analysis. It's more focused on the Brazilian market and how the Brazilian market uh, works. It's a kind of uh, illustration which demonstrate the uh, interaction between the players. I think it's pretty similar to South Korea. We have uh, the providers of, uh, of medical devices, could be an importer, could be a manufacturer, could be a distributor, could be both. And those uh, providers give the medical device to be used by healthcare by healthcare provider, by, by physician, by hospitals, and those, uh, those medical devices, uh, they are paid by, our, by the government or by the private insurance. And here, I think it's pretty, pretty similar to uh, South Korea, to Singapore, we have the uh, I usually mention it as the journey of the medical device, the medical device to be uh, to be used into a patient. They have to uh, they have to pass for for this process. Have to be registered. Have to be ordered. Have to be stored, trained, and be distributed. It is the same here. Uh, I've tried to make uh, uh, illustration of uh, the complexity of those steps in Brazil. For instance, sanitary registration, it's not so complex, but can take uh, a long time and could be expensive too. Uh, the same of the, uh, the process of importing a product. Uh, can be very expensive. You can rely on some consultancy, some firm that could be uh, could be help you out. The same of storage trade in Brazil uh, distributor. I think it's different from other countries. Besides providing the devices, besides. Uh, Besides operating and making the logistics service, the distributor usually uh, provides equipment, uh, assistant equipment and instruments to the hospital. The hospital usually don't have this kind of equipment. Then it overburdened the, uh, in terms of cost, the distributor in Brazil. Okay, talking about sanitary registration, if you uh, would like to export to Brazil, you have to interact with a company in Brazil which is legal, legally established. 
it's uh, uh, you have to because this company has to have which we call AFI it's a company operating permit the company in Brazil is responsible for the foreign visa for all the uh, for all for everything related regarding with the product of course the company has to comply with good manufacturing practice depending on the risk of the product the risk can vary from 1 until 4 it's low until the maximum for 3 and 4 categories the company has to present a good manufacturing practices certificate which we call in Portuguese CBPF or GMP okay for the registration process at the visa, the necessary documentation is extensive and involves dozens of common documents. It's a kind of classification, it's technical, as I said, can vary from class 1, it's low risk, it's the most sim simple uh, medical device, to maximum risk, class 4, and this classification depends on duration of contact, invasiveness, anatomy. There is a number of rules which uh, the company has to follow. Then, uh, usually, companies rely on some consulting firms to to do to do this this kind of job. It's the import process. I think you have the material. You can uh, check this out. In terms of market access, uh, my friend has talked about the, the market access in Singapore. The market access in Brazil is complex. Then, before exporting to Brazil, you have to think if your medical devices is already uh, introduced to our system, have to remember that we have two kind of systems, the public one and the private one, and both has uh, both have a list of procedure to be uh, reimbursed. Uh, I usually talk about that because some uh, some companies might think, oh, I have a very innovative, very disruptive uh, medical device I'd like to export to Brazil and, uh, but I don't know if this medical device is already introduced in our system and if no, you have to uh, make a kind of uh, you have to submit this process in Conitec which is the notify body responsible for incorporating uh, technologies in our health uh, public system and ANS which is responsible for incorporating uh, medical devices into private one have to follow the assessment of health technologies based on upon affordability basic cost effectiveness of the medical devices, then you have a, it's a it's a device. Before uh, exporting to Brazil, you have to make the diligence and have to uh, make this effort to know if the medical device is already introducing in our list. It's the final, uh, it's the end of my presentation, how to do business in Brazilian healthcare sector. It's a big company, it's a big country, it, we have uh, a lot of consumption of medical device, but, but it's a highly regulated country. You have to know about the visa, you have to know about reimbursement, then uh, it's important to establish good local partners, regulatory affairs, consulting, law firms, in order to make the process 
uh, accomplish. I think it's important to establish uh, also uh, a kind of partnership with local good, uh, local companies, and the companies has to uh, has to comply with quality standards, has to comply with uh, compliance standards, and the quality one. You have to make a kind of uh, due diligence uh, before making a kind of partnership. We can count, you can count on a bride in our association to help you out in this uh, assessment. I, uh, I'm here to, uh, to help some companies to find, to find out some distributor in Brazil and I'm uh, willing to help you out. It's important to define a regulatory strategy. What kind of partnership I'd like, as a Korean company, I'd like to uh, have with Brazilian company? Most of the companies, uh, in general, starts out by making a kind of distribution agreement with Brazilian companies. It's easier. And some companies separate the regulatory strategy and the commercial strategy. Because uh, regulatory strategy, they, what they, they, they do, they usually choose a consulting firm uh, known as a hosting company to be responsible for the, the registration of the product which is separate from a commercial, uh, commercial approach. And you have to have a consistent business plan, which includes cost, deadline, risks, because uh, the registration process in Brazil is likely uh, six months, but can be longer, and they have to take into account. Okay, and to that's the end of my presentation. I'd like to make a, uh, an invite for South Korean companies to join us in Brazil. We are going to hold a fair in Brazil, which is called Hospitalar. It will be held in May, from twenty uh, third of May to. 26, and a bride will uh, have a booth in this fair, and you are trying to make a kind of uh, business matchmaking between some companies from around the world. Uh, I'd like to invite you as uh, leaders of South Korean companies to join us and to meet some companies from Brazil. Okay, my content here, uh, my WhatsApp, it's easier to, to talk, and my email, it's a good, it was a great pleasure to be here, thank you very much. Alright, well then, thank you very thank you for your great presentation, Leslie. And then we're going to move on the last Q&A session, as you all know, this is the last opportunity to ask the question on our foreign speakers on site. Is there anyone, if you have any question or idea, suggestion, we happily welcome to listen your comment. Should I give you last count to three? All right. Would you please hand over the mic to the second line? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presenting. Uh, we have planned to 2023 AWMC project. Uh, I think I cannot. Uh, May is your uh, San Paulo Expo. We yeah. Can join, but uh, next month is June 2023 AWMC. And can I have a chance to meet you or? 
any chance? Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you can join the AWM ship. No. Okay, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm very excited <laughs> to listen. You guys are talking. All right. Yeah. This is the very last chance. Is there anybody for additional comments? It seems that yes, no more question or comments. Perfect. Thank you. You can back to your seat again. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you so much. In his presentation, he said that it is important to establish the local partner and companies with good reputation in the market. So please remember and keep in mind you. And yeah, well then, it has been such a long journey today so far for to find the crucial answer for medical equipment industry in this global field. So I'm gonna wrap up here briefly. Finally, I would like to thank all our attendees who are here until the very end at this moment. And I also would like to once again convey my heartfelt gratitude to the speakers who travel all the way to Korea to participate in today's conference. And thank you very much once again. Lastly, if you have any further question, uh, please contact Katra and we will do our best to support you later on. Please don't forget to check your belongings behind you before you leave. And you can leave your receiver on the table. And once again, hope to see you all again next year. Thank you.